How crazy would it be if I just painted a crude today? Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today, I'm going to try to find the perfect model to paint. Now, I have a list of tons of ideas of projects that I want to get to. You know, models that I want to paint for myself, for friends, there are games I want to play, and so I've just got this list of things that I, I want to do or feel I have to do. The point of today is to forget the list, forget any kind of obligation. I just want to find something that sparks joy today. I want to find something that is just perfect for the moment, something that is is going to make me happy and I'm going to be enthusiastic about, something that's just, you know, that enthusiasm is just going to carry me through the whole paint job. So, you know, everything in my collection, when I bought it, I was really excited about it. And then that excitement goes up and down and up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of my pretty cool collection, show you the, uh, the models that are sparking joy today, and then we're going to pick something that is just the one. You know, we're going to find the one for today, we're going to paint it up, and this should be fun. So, I'm going to start by just looking on the shelves behind me here. We're going to go through these boxes, and we're going to find a few prime candidates. Predator? Maybe. Iron Jaws? Maybe. So, the, the rest of the rules here is that I'm not going to concern myself with, oh, I've been, I've been saving this model for something, or, you know, I want it to be part of an army and I, and I haven't figured out my paint scheme yet. I'm not putting any restrictions on myself. If I find a model that is right for today, that's what we're doing. I've been getting some comments about this one. Um, and I do have plans for this, but we can ignore plans for today. If something is right, we're doing it. Think about it. Similar, more Romans, but this time with Gauls. Now, if I needed to paint a T-Rex, this might be the time. Hmm, this might actually be the first contender. We'll, we'll put this over here. I wasn't really feeling these. Not today, not yet. Okay, um, I've got a lot of plastic bins here that are worth looking at. This is uh, this is a pretty good way to condense stuff down and to and to store stuff in in plastic bags inside a big big clear Tupperware like this. This is the Green Knight from Bretonia. That's an option. Ooh. Dark Elf Corsairs. Skaven. Chaos Warriors. Dreadfleet. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. I have not thought about my uh, my Dreadfleet models for a long time, but I'm looking at this and this is kind of cool. So we're gonna we're gonna put that over there. This is the uh, the Inquisitor Stompy or whatever, the, the big 40k Inquisitor that has the, the robot dreadnought thing with a cathedral on the back. I forget his name. It's cool though. Empire. Witch Elves. Chaos Hounds, Metal, Warp Lightning Cannon, Ooh. 
Okay, enough of this box. We're gonna put this box back and find something else. Epidemius, or whatever he's called. This isn't, this isn't uh, where I actually store the models, but this packaging for Arena Rex gives me an idea. We've got a lot of Dark Eldar in this box. Scourges. This one's actually interesting. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the of the big wings for part of an army, but as a one-off model, I'll put that aside. The Slith, Dark Eldar Slith. Yeah, this is a possibility. Mostly these are bits from uh, Venoms and Raiders and stuff like that. Someday I'll have a Dark Eldar army. Someday, maybe even a Drukhari army. Ooh, a grotesque. Lilith Hesperix. And a uh, Hlamian. Okay, we got more Dark Eldar in there. Um, if that's if that's the mood that comes upon us, we'll we'll know to go back to this one. I think this is Metal Sisters of Battle. Okay, there's some crazy models in here. There's There might be a possibility in here. Oh. First off, big ol' statue. Sisters. Penitent Engine. Mordheim Inquisitor, I think. This is this is one of those that I forgot I had. This is the point of this exercise: going through, finding stuff I forgot I had that you know in the past I wasn't motivated enough to paint. But Mordheim Inquisitor is high on my list right now. These are all just variants of sisters here. Oh, and this is the box of like special characters, weird inquisitors, um, dialogus, priests. I'm gonna leave this bag aside, but let's uh, let's check it out first. Old Celestine. One of these like uh, crusader guys with the big shield. Hospitaler. <laughs> yeah, this bag is really gold right here. Um, this is one of the old assassins, the like Calidus assassin or something. Ooh, another assassin. Dialogus. Lord Jacobus, or Priest Jacobus, or whatever. Another assassin. Okay, this this bag just has so many possibilities. We're, we're, we'll leave it aside. Uh, Sisters Repentia. I don't know if that's really uh, Goobertown PG. Most of the rest of these are just regular sisters. More penitent engines? This... This is one of those big ol' organ tanks. This is so good, this is so ridiculous. You know, um, one of my all-time favorite minis might be this sister here who's just wailing on this organ. 
I love the look of her just getting ready to just lay down some sick beats and shoot rockets out of this this giant cathedral organ here. You know, he's got the servitor in the back loading up the missiles. This is this is great. Well, well, this is a possibility. This is a possibility. Okay, we got a lot of gold out of here, but let's put this box back. Here's some old favorites, Night Goblins. Fanatics, these used to be one of my favorite units. Um, not today, not these today. The mood isn't right, but I do love them. Rock Trolls from uh, Battle of Skull Pass. This is a possibility. Old Giant from Warhammer. For some reason, uh, Space Marine decals. Need these for something else, putting those aside. Do a big Warhammer giant. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. This is a contender. I gotta tell you, this is this is a possibility. Big old Warhammer giant. Ah. 40k orcs. Their time will come, but the moment isn't right. Yeah, the time will definitely come, but not right now. No orcs today. A mystery bin here. Ordered some Reaper paints and they sent me a, a bunch of minis over the holiday season. Cool minis, but not today, I don't think. I think this bag was originally going to be part of my uh, Goober Town Roulette treasure box, but then the box filled up and I didn't need any more minis, so let's take a quick look in here and see if there's anything cool. Samurai Warrior. Eh, not bad, but nothing for today. Metal Dwarfs. Found something to put aside for another reason. I think this knight might be another uh, Mordheim kind of dude. Yeah, this might be from Mordheim. We'll leave him aside, he's cool. And I've got a got a box of Space Marine stuff here. Good stuff, but the moment isn't right. You think I'm done? <laughs> this is a very special box of Snotlings. Snotlings, Snotling pump wagons. These are the two uh, original designs for Games Workshop Snotling Pump Wagons, and uh, I know they've got a third one coming out for Blood Bowl soon, but uh, nothing will beat these old metal originals. Plus I've got a lot of Snotlings in there too. We'll come back to that. Here's a box of extra 3D prints that I've made. 
So we can do another Yeti. Do another giant griffin. This is Anna. This is a uh, sculpt that a viewer sent to me. I'm gonna put this on the list. This is a this is a really cool kind of post-apocalyptic archer. So a little bit larger scale too. This could be fun. So this is a box that has a lot of old blister packs in it, and believe it or not, most of these are from War Master. So these are really small scale figures. Um, we got dwarfs, I think there's chaos and elves and uh, uh, tomb kings in here. High elves. Chaos Warriors. Someday I really got to do something with War Master. It's such a such a crazy, crazy game. You just get you can get so many figures in such a small area with War Master. Get to practice painting on a smaller scale, but today is not the day. Like I'm, these are sparking joy, but not enough. Battlefleet Gothic. I am happy that I own these. I don't know if I could do like a really clever paint scheme on them, but someday I'll find something to do with them. Someday. Someday. Alright, this was not the box for me today. We gotta find another box here. Here's one. These are Seraphon or Lizard Men or whatever you wanna call them. Good stuff. This is actually the lot where I got the Seraphons that uh, I did my biggest painting breakthrough on where I was doing the layering techniques on those shields, so uh, a lot of those test models are actually in this box here. Oh, come on, uh, a dinosaur riding a dinosaur? Plus this one has a big crazy banner. Alright, this is a strong contender, we're leaving this out. Temple Guard or something. Temple Guard is cool. Or we could just go all out and make a Triceratops thing. What is a uh, Stegodon? I can't remember what these are called, but these are... This is, this is an example of, you know, don't save any models for some future project. Like, at some point I want to make a Seraphon army, but let's not even worry about that. If I want to paint this model, I'm going to paint this model, so we're leaving it out. Okay, that does it for my plastic bins, but uh, I have cake pans. Let's go through cake pans. Okay, these are a pretty convenient way to uh, store like delicate models, magnets, and steel cake pans. Um, tell that one of my models lost its magnet, but that's all right. Anyway, this is um, mostly test models for Dark Eldar. There's nothing I want to paint in this box, but you get the idea. This is Sisters of Battle and a few Space Marines and um, look Looking at each one, not this box. Some orcs. Tyranids. Okay, I see something I like in here. Okay, this is uh, a crocodile from Crocodile Games. 
This is uh, a company I ran into at Gen Con last year, and it was one of those things where I had never heard of the company, I saw their models on display, and a couple of their lines just really jumped out at me. They had yetis, they had crocodiles, and I ended up getting a, a starter kit for crocodiles, which continues to be on my list of, of things to paint that I, ha I haven't gotten to yet. And so I want to be a little bit careful that I don't interfere with like my, my plans and things that I really want to paint but haven't gotten to yet. I want this to be something I really want to paint today, but I do really want to paint this, so I'm going to leave some of these crocodiles out. Um, this one is kind of the company logo. This one is just a just a mad crocodile with muscles and his teeth, uh, sorry, his tongue hanging out of his teeth there. There's, there's some good possibilities in here. I'll, I'll leave a couple of crocodiles out. Dark Eldar and Imperial Guard and the rest of the box. Some other day, some other day. Okay, this is more 3D prints. Uh, most of these are from Artisan Guild. This is uh, James Wapple, Wapelius Spellbrush, uh, in miniature form, and he's a cool mini. I'm gonna leave him aside, he's a possibility. Uh, otherwise, it's a lot of muscular Amazonian women, which are, which are pretty appealing, honestly, but I, I don't know if we're doing them today. We've got more of these uh, Titan Forge uh, spell blades. This is the, the Adept, the Mage Apprentice. Yeah, here's one of those Amazonian uh, warrior women. Uh, a couple of those Amazons, though, let's see. I really like the archers. I got a wizard lady. <laughs> okay. Here, like most of these boxes, I have some Dark Eldar test models, but I also have uh, most of my Guild Ball models in here. So, Guild Ball was something I picked up two Gen Cons ago. Again, something that I'd kind of heard of before, but then I, I ran into their booth and I ran into some deals at the secondhand store, and so I got some metal guild ball models. And some of them are pretty cool. Duh. Leave out a couple of guild ball choices there. Chaos Knights, some other day. Old Space Marine models. And a few Primaris. Actually some half-painted Snotlings in case we need to fill up those pump wagons. And some Dark Eldar test models. Some Dark Eldars. I'm not gonna leave aside uh, one. This female Archon model was so much better than the male Scissor Hands Archon model, and I never painted her. We'll leave her aside just to, just to consider here. More Del Dark Eldar test models. Dark Eldar Witches, and Incubi, Dark Eldar, uh... Yeah, Dark Eldar Witches and Incubi, so that's a possibility. We got the old Drazar in there. Yeah, not today, not today. More old Dark Eldar. Okay, here's something interesting. A lot of room in this one. I 
Actually, everything in this box is a possibility. Okay, the female sequitor from a few years back. I love this model. I love this model, and it is, it's one of those that's been in the back of my mind of I need to find something cool to do with this model. Let's, let's set this aside. I don't know if I have an idea today, but if, if I get an idea in, in the next, you know, 20 minutes or so, very strong possibility. Male sequitur. Uh, Escher ladies? Yes. Escher ladies for sure. Okay. Now, I just found uh, the Arena Rex models that were, were left over from a video I did about a year ago. And so we've got uh, some pretty unique characters here. I'm just going to look at each one to figure out if, if any of these are the one. This, this Spartan lady is a possibility. We'll leave her out. Maybe this guy, too. Alright, what else do we have here? What else do we have? Tau, including Crute. How crazy would it be if I just painted a Crute today? Fire Warriors. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna run off camera real quick and uh, grab some stuff from some other places. Chibis? I'm not gonna open up this whole box here, but um, yeah, I've got I've got secret stashes of minis around this room, and this is something that I've been looking at and and looking forward to for a long time. I don't know if the moment is today though. When I was thinking about this video, I thought that I thought that this might actually be a winner, but I don't know if the moment is today. Oh, there's some good ones in here, though. I think this is the box of heroes. Oh, these are strong, though. This wizard is calling to me. This dwarf slayer guy is calling to me. We're gonna leave this aside. This is this is possible. These are definitely a possibility. Let me pop off camera again and find some more stuff. Well, like I said, I have a, a pretty healthy size collection here. Yeah, I've got a I've got a pretty big collection. This is a mini I'd forgotten about for a little while, but this is uh, a Reaper special edition something or other anniversary model, and it's it's this little gnome alchemist throwing a potion, and I've seen some painted versions of her that look amazing. So this is actually a really strong possibility. And she was a gift to me from Dave at Table Ready Gaming. So, um... Whew, whew. And at the time he gave her to me, I was really excited. And continues to be one of those models on my wish list. And today might be the day. This is a really strong contender. We're gonna put her aside. Battle for McCrag pilot with his, uh, his suitcase and his pistol there. Okay, this is, this is a box of, I think, mostly non-GW sculpts. We've got 
Um, some Hail Caesar, Romans. We've got Greedo. Yeah, not today, Greedo. We've got a wizard. Bandits. Now, Malifo, I have a few Malifo models, and I've only put together a few, and I haven't painted any of them yet, so Malifo is something I want to do more with. And some of these models are crazy cool, so I'm going to put this aside and give it some serious thought. Okay, here's one I want to talk about. This, uh, this land speeder is a model that I got when I was checking out some small uh, toy and puzzle game store. It's a, it's a local, independently owned store, and it looked like the kind of place that might sell some, some nerd supplies. And so I went in there and, you know, they had a lot of games from everything from Monopoly to Carcassonne to um, actually some D&D some books. And they didn't have Warhammer, but they did have uh, Star Wars Legion. And it was one of those times where I was going into a small store, and any time I go into an independent store, I try to buy something. You know, even if it's, uh, it's you know, a pack of card sleeves or something like that. If I'm in a small, independently owned store, and I kind of waste their time by walking around and pawing through their merchandise, I try to walk out with something. And in this case, I saw Star Wars Legion, I thought, okay, let's see if I can find a really cool model, and I found this. And it's, uh, it's kind of like Luke's Land Speeder with three Rebels in there, and all of the three models look awesome, the Land Speeder is awesome, and I was really excited to paint this up for an episode. So I bought it, I took it home, I was, you know, I was thinking the episode title would be like the coolest mini I've ever seen because this thing is awesome. And then like the next day, Sarastro uh, posted an awesome, awesome video on it. And I am still going to paint this someday. My paint job probably will not be as good as Sarastro's unless I literally just copy his video um, for all his awesome techniques for weathering the land speeder and stuff. But anyway, this is... I, I think this is one of the coolest models in the Legion line, and someday, someday, maybe even today, the idea is growing on me, so I'll set this aside for now and give it a thought. Here are some uh, Victoria's model, Victoria's miniatures. Victoria something, Victoria Lamb. Um, they, she was doing that uh, that charity fundraiser for Australian wildlife as a result of the the big wildfires in Australia a few months back. And so it, it was a deal where if you buy these tanks, the proceeds all go to um, a wildlife foundation out in Australia. So I bought a couple of these tanks. Um, yeah, I, I feel bad about this, you know, that I, I bought enough tanks so that the shipping was free and all of the proceeds of the sale went to the Wildlife Foundation, so uh, they lost money on that one. The least I could do is, is paint up one of their tanks on the channel someday. And these are awesome models. I will do that. I don't know if the day is today, though. But also in the package, uh, yeah, not only did I get free shipping, I bought enough um, so that they gave me a couple of free models. And so we've got uh, a sniper lady and um, a commissar lady sort of sort of figure. And both of these are really good. Actually, I'm gonna leave both of these out. I don't think I don't think I'm doing the tanks today, but either of these are possibilities. Excellent minis. Okay, a, a little while back I did a video uh, showing off those Artisan Guild uh, Amazons, and at the same time I got sent a couple other really, really nice 3D prints, definitely better than what I could do from 
uh, excellent minis here. And so I've got an ogre uh, stirring a pot, which is such a cool model, except the arm sticking out of the pot really creeps me out. So if I do this one, I'll cut off the ogre arm. Or not the ogre arm, but the, the soup arm. Yeah, that's a good sculpt. And there's also orc warlord lady riding a wolf. Also a strong possibility. Let me poke around a little bit more. I might have a few more options. Be right back. Loon Curse. Uh, any squig you could imagine is in this box. We're not doing squigs today, though. Now, Silver Tower. This is a much more serious possibility. When I first had the idea of this episode, of kind of looking around my collection and just finding a cool model to paint, I was a little bit worried because an idea immediately came into my mind of just finding the coolest model in this box to paint up, and that really was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to be looking through my collection and be surprised and find something that I had not been expecting. You know, when I pressed record today, I did not know what I would be painting. I had, a, I had a few ideas of like models that were stuck in my mind that I thought I might accidentally kind of end up on, but I really want to be surprised. So I knew I, anyway, I knew I had to hit the record button and start this episode before I accidentally selected a model. And a lot of the stuff in this box are strong possibilities. So let's take a look here. Well, actually, just on the box, the uh, the Barbarian Warlord guy, very cool. Um, a lot of the Zinch, Zangor folks in here, very cool. Um, even even the, the, the priest with the Griffhound. So we're leaving Silver Tower out. There are several possibilities in here. Uh, let me go to the other side of the room and see what else I have. Alright, we'll have this be the final contender of the day. So, when I was thinking about this episode, I decided to give myself no limitations. Like, um, don't save a model for anything, nothing is off limits. If I see a model and I want to paint it, go for it. Even if it's like one of the most expensive models I think literally the most expensive model I own. Even if it's the most expensive model I own, if the mood strikes and it would make me happy to throw a coat of paint on this today, that's what we're doing. So, um, this is in the this is in the contention. He's really cool, but but not today, not today. So, I think I have pulled out enough models. I still have. I still have more of my collection that you haven't seen. Not a whole lot more at this point, but I still have a few things that you haven't seen. But we've got enough on the table now. Let's sort through it and figure out if there's anything that, that really hits the moment. It is time to narrow this down, call some stuff out, and come down to uh, the one. The one. We gotta find the one. And so I started the agonizing process of choosing my favorites from among all these minis. I called it down to a few models that I was truly excited to paint, and from those I jumped right in and started working on my absolute favorite, the one that was really calling to me. I'll share those finalists in just a moment. Recently I've been thinking about making a video on organizing and storing hobby stuff. I'm going to sideline that one for a while and just tell you that those clear boxes filled with plastic bags are my favorite storage solution that I've tried. 
The plastic bags provide cushion for the models and bits. You can use big bags or small, and you can nest bags to get as much organization and subdivision as you want. It all compresses down pretty small, the boxes are protective and stackable, and everything is clear, so as long as you have just a bit of organization, it's not too hard to find what you want. Also, those cake pans for magnetized minis aren't too bad either. So obviously, I have a big collection. In this video, most of my collection, but certainly not all of it, flashed across the screen. A lot of us who've been in the hobby for a while have a complex relationship with our collections of unpainted minis. Is it a pile of shame or a pile of opportunity? Are those boxes filled with obligations or are they filled with raw potential? We come up with lots of little justifications for the space that our hobby stuff takes up in our homes. Myself? Well, I've loved this hobby for a long time now. I also love thrift shopping, Craigslisting, and winning auctions on eBay. Some of my Craigslist hauls, in particular, have been powerful. And of course, when I go to a local hobby store, I try to make sure that I always walk out with a purchase. Added to that, because of this YouTube channel, some companies and viewers have sent me stuff. Over time, this all adds up. I'm a positive guy, and I'm one of those folks who views my collection as an awesome library of models and bits that'll come in handy someday. This collection feeds my hobby, and it feeds the YouTube channel. It gives me a constant and varied supply of project ideas. The point of this video wasn't to brag about my big collection. It also wasn't meant to just foreshadow future episodes. I wanted to talk about how to pick painting projects that really excite you. I have a list of models that I feel somewhat obligated to work on for one reason or another, but it's so much more fun to be spontaneous. Our passion for various minis and ideas comes and goes in cycles. This may seem obvious, but when you're getting ready to paint something new, consider finding the model that is calling to you today. If you can, turn off all of these inhibitions one by one. This was an expensive model, and I don't want to waste it. This model might be part of an army someday, and I haven't decided on a color scheme for that force. I don't know if I would ever use this in a game. Why should I paint it? I'm saving this as a special treat for myself for when I'm done with that unit of troops. Consider ignoring all of that stuff. The voice you should be listening to is the one telling you how cool a model is and how much fun it would be to slap a coat of paint on it right now. You were excited back when you bought each of the models in your collection, and you should be that excited when you pick up your paintbrush to actually work on them. Find out what the perfect mini in your collection is this week and paint it. Find the one that's really going to hit the spot. Repeat the same process next week and the week after. Try to always be painting your favorite model. As those waves of enthusiasm come, catch them and ride them. For today's project, I got it down to the finals. It seems that I wasn't in the mood to paint a vehicle. But other than that, there aren't a ton of similarities between these. Just fun models that were calling out to me for one reason or another. So I did pick a favorite, perfect mini from this set, and I did get right to work on it. I'm making that into a separate video. This one is long enough already. In the meantime, I encourage you to speculate on what I chose, let me know what you would have picked, and let me know if there are any others that I showed today that you'd like to see me paint. Of course, all of these are minis that I love, and minis that may show up on the channel again someday. If there's a bunch of interest in some of these, and my own enthusiasm stays high, well, there's some more possible episodes right there. I had a lot of fun with this rummage through my collection. Whether your collection is big or small, I highly recommend that you give this a try sometime. Forget the inhibitions, and just endeavor to find out which models are calling to you today. The perfect model today might be different from the perfect model tomorrow or next week. Grab something you're itching to work on and jump right into it. Ride that enthusiasm. Well, I do apologize for the suspense. You'll just have to tune back in for the sequel to see what I picked. Make sure you're subscribed and that you have that little old bell notification on so you don't miss it. 
While you wait for the sequel, I encourage you to paint something that truly brings you joy. Well folks, that's all for this time. Thank you so much for watching.